legacy for giving us ideas of what kind of system we need, culture we need here. And you spoke so much of English. But education, you rightly pointed out, our problem in India has been politicization of Indian education, politicalization of Indian education. Whether it is in the primary school or it is in the universities, India has been a victim of politics of education because education was not taken as a source of inspiration, knowledge, but used as a power, political tool to get votes. In terms of dividing by languages, but the basic problem is our university used to produce leaders. Most of the leaders in the last 10 years have been from the university leadership. They have been coming. But coming back to your role, because when I say politicalization of Indian education, higher education is in a mess in India. We have about 800, 900 universities, private universities now. And we have so many government universities also. None of them find their place in the first 50 global universities. There must be rotten in our state of education. My feeling is universities in India, this is after looking at the last five, 10 years experience, politicalization of Indian university, making governors who are political appointees as chancellor of any university, it likes sowing the seeds for fighting on political lines. Am I right? Because you have been also chancellor of university, that a chancellor who's, who's appointed by a political establishment, a former politician, can he disconnect himself from the ideology which he represents and the objective of a good higher education? Uh, before I come to the role of the chancellor, one more thing I would like to point out, that unfortunately for a long period of time, education, instead of becoming source of enlightenment and as it has been said in our tradition education is something which liberates us sa vidya ya vimuktaye instead of that education for a long period of time became uh, something like you need a license to carry a gun so in order to pursue some profession, you need some degrees. And it became divorced. India has always believed in Vigyan Vigyan Sahitam. Gyan and Vigyan, Vigyan is to know the world outside. And Gyan is, there is a whole world inside you. So Gyan Vigyan Sahitam. Sangya pragyam apekchate, the end of all scholarship, all learning, is wisdom which results in doing good to others. Unfortunately, that is the major ill from which our system of education suffered for a long period of time because Macaulay had a clear vision. Not that, that, I would like to say okay, that was alien. Nothing is alien. Anything from Indian viewpoint, nothing human is alien to us. But they had a limited objective of that education. To create India, to, crea to educate a number of Indians who can serve them. And they were prepared only for that purpose. The holistic view was not there. And unfortunately, that even after independence, we did not give up that line of thinking. And now with uh, um, certain modifications were made, I won't say that we had followed totally that line, but overwhelmingly we continued that tradition. But now with new education policy of 2020, I think uh, at least on the level of uh, policy, there is a sea change. Uh, when you talk about the role of the governor as chancellor, certainly there is a, ten, you know, we must not forget 
that for a long period of time, very long period of time, India was politically fragmented. It was that politically fragmented India when Shankaracharya arose from Kerala and he went around the country, created four months, and people generally say that he, by establishing these four months, he, he created a sense of unity among Indians who were essentially politically deeply fragmented. Small, India was divided into small parts. But I personally believe that buildings, it is ideas, not buildings, which bring change. What, what the achievement of Shankaracharya was not creation of four months. The real thing which he did was, he took out four Mahavakyas from the four Vedas and gave maha, one Mahavakya to each one of these months. And all those four Mahavakyas they have almost the same meaning. Ahem Brahma Asmi, Tattvam Asi, Pragyanam Brahma, Ayam Atma Brahma. Meaning that Indian, the unique, unique contribution of Indian civilization is that it has divinized humanity and has humanized the divinity. And if I use the words of Swami Vivekananda, he said my mission, and remember, that right from Shankaracharya to Swami Vivekananda, no one has ever claimed originality. They have only reinterpreted the old ideals and values into taking into consideration the new environment and, and the changes which have taken place. So Swami Vivekananda said, my mission can be explained in very simple words. I want to teach unto mankind. He did not say to Indians. I want to teach unto mankind their divinity and its manifestation in all movements of life. That is what, that, that part is what was totally lacking in our education because it has a universal approach. As I said earlier, religion, any culture defined by religion will create others. Any Culture defined by race will create others because everyone does not belong. We believe that all people, ekam sadva vipra bahuda vadanti, all people should not be confined to one single interpretation of reality. That we have a, we have this universe to give to give an illustration. There are older democracies. They did not give voting right to women. Why? because they were influenced by the Greek thought, which has really shaped the European mind, that women do not have the soul. Black people do not have the soul. And somebody who does not have Atma is fit for exploitation. We have a right to exploit them. India had only 14 or 15% literacy rate when we became free. We started with universal franchise. Why? Our leaders uh, were better than them. That is not the reason. So Our I cultural I values I'll were inter different. I interrupt you because yes. basic question, the topic is chancellors and governors. So I want to ask a very specific question. Yes. Do you think time has come that governors and president and vice president, they should not be appointed chancellors or visitors of any university, let it let to the academicians only. No, 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 I do not agree. And this background I have given you only to emphasize highlight the thing that in India, forces which are of divisive nature, they are of ancient yore, whereas our unity is a political unity. I'm not talking of cultural and spiritual unity. Cultural and spiritual unity, it is because of that that political unity has come. But politically, India has been fragmented and there is no dearth of politicians who, who are swayed when they get public support, who get swayed and they start pursuing things which are not really very conducive to strengthen the national unity. They start doing things 
which give his strength to divisive mindset. So Therefore, say, and, sir, and, sir. and autonomy of the university, here you have educators sitting here. Autonomy of the university is a sacred concept. In United Kingdom, when a minister has to seek opinion of an academician, he never calls him to his office. The minister himself goes to the, to the house or the office of the academician. In USA, if you have to give evidence, whosoever you may be, you will have to stand in the dock. But if a teacher comes, whether teacher is from primary school or from university, he is the only one, she is the only one who is offered a chair there. We, unless we show respect for the autonomy of the universities and to protect the autonomy of the universities, you will have to save the universities from interference by the executive. And the only way you can save it from uh, appointment uh, from interference by the executive is that the chancellor should not be appointed by the executive. No, I'm just saying, okay, we'll go because time is a little. So basically you're saying that for autonomy of the university, you need a politician to be the chancellor of a university, whether it's selected by a government who be at the center or in the state, because it happens to conflict between that. So you basically you're saying there's no need for a change of present people, governors heading the university. Go that Honorable time. President and governors, I think it was a very wise decision taken by, at that time, that chancellorship, or the, the responsibility to, to protect the autonomy of the university shall not be wasted in the government, but in the, in the, in the, at the central level in the honorable president and at the state level in the governors. Other question you must have read in the newspaper, I have also read it. Honorable retired justice of Supreme Court, Nariman, has hmm. pointed out about the role of governors in his speech recently, which he has chosen you also there in that. He has chosen to? He has spoken about chancellors and everything about the gentleman. Okay. No, so I, what, I, what, what do you want to say about Mr. Rowington? Because well, well, Rowington is well respected. He is not a person who is politically aligned, but he has taken... No, I, I don't think you have, you have, you have read it uh, really with, with, with care or heard the speech carefully. His whole... Anger was directed at me. He was not talking even about the chancellors. He was just showing his, his deep anger against me. And governor of Kerala, governor of Kerala, although the fact is, <laughs> most of it about me, he did not mention Punjab governor, he did not mention Tamil Nadu governor. All three cases were pending there. He was unhappy with me. I wish he had told the audience what I have here with me, this paper, and I will give it to you. The government of Kerala has sanctioned, what is the name of the, of the honorable so, retired judge of the Supreme Court? Whom you have mentioned? What is his name? Uh, say, 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 say a bit loudly. Rowington. Huh, full, full name. Full name, I call him Rowington. Full name, Rowington Nariman. Nariman is his father. Is that right? Is now I will read the government of Kerala. This is Gazette notification. The Advocate General has requested the government wide reference so and so to sanction 30 lakh rupees to be paid to Shri Fali S. Nariman. Senior Advocate of the Supreme Court, 9 lakh 90 thousand to Subhash Sharma, his junior. 4 lakh to Shri Zafir Ahmed, again his junior, and three lakh rupees to Shri Vinod K. Anand, his killer. Total is 30 lakh, almost 14 lakh, and three lakh. Which year? Which year? About the same, this case, the case which was filed against us in the Supreme Court. Fully appeared so, there. He had not appeared. This is what I am telling you. Only for giving opinion, only for giving opinion, I wish he had informed his audience that there is some conflict of interest when he was speaking against me. 
I will not get it. Uh, and and I'll, 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 in fact, this is very important. Can anybody in this hall imagine of approaching the Supreme Court if he has to pay this fat amount to the, oh, to the advocate only for giving opinion, not even to appear in the court? The father is receiving the money and son is blasting the governor for having not allowed a situation where that opinion can become can help these Kerala government. That is my answer. Anyway, you have given us information because Fali Nariman is a is very respected. Sorry? Your, Fali Nariman is the most respected. Sir, most you respected. Even now. I'm not saying he's not respected. And, I'm, and, only, and I'm only showing you the Gazette notification of the Kerala government. I, 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 will you be in a position if your case goes to the Supreme Court? Will you be in a position to pay? And you are one of the leading men in the country. Will you be in a position to pay 40 lakhs only for opinion? I, I would not get into debate with Honorable Sir, what on kind of... You, will, we are talking, we are discussing... I will, I will take it as information... Sir, we are discussing education. Will, what is happening will, to our ju judicial system. I will take it as information for a newspaper, so yeah. that is, I won't comment yes. on whether it's right or wrong, yes. because let the public judge about it. Yes. I will leave it to the audience Sir, for Sir, if somebody from my family is being paid such a huge amount, and without mentioning that fact, I am lambasting somebody... In my public lecture, is it, is it, is it even in accordance with the, with the principles of the natural justice? No, the, I, the, 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 the bills about which they had gone to the court, there must be sitting many lawyers here. Though the, bill, the bills which have been passed by the assembly, the purpose is to remove the governor as chancellor and give the authority to the government to appoint the chancellors for each university. Now, the, now you will incur some expenditure on the office of the chancellor, and if you incur some expenditure, then there is a constitutional provision, then that bill will be called money bill. And if you want to pass a money bill, you need prior, prior approval of the governor in order to to curtail that, what they did, they passed on the responsibility to meet the expenses to the universities. In my opinion, those bills are money bills. Those bills, no way they can be, they can be, I, I can approve them. But Honorable Former Justice is saying, I do not know whether he has read the file, I do not know whether he knows the objection which I have, yet he has chosen to lambast me. But this paper shows that there is a conflict of interest. His father has been paid, his father and his juniors have been paid 40 lakh rupees by the Kerala government. No, Dr. Shoshan, anyway, now we have to know that how Arim of the kind is a man of conviction rather than convenience, and he does what he feels his conviction is right. Thank you very much for coming because we don't have enough time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.